So tonight we're in part six, and we're going to talk about why should we get rid of unforgiveness, unforgiveness. It says, when you refuse to forgive, your unforgiveness keeps you emotionally, physically, and spiritually stuck to both the offense and the offender. Do we not agree on that? Yes, yes sir. A continual refusal to forgive digs a deeper hole in which you begin to hide your hardened heart. Blaming others is a favorite tactic to justify unforgiveness. Let's go to Romans chapter 3, if we will. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Let's go back a few scriptures. I always like to look a little further back. Let's go back. Let's go back to verse 10. Start from that, Pastor. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away, and they have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Yeah. So, so we're, we're, we're understanding here that that's a lot going on. Anybody ever felt that way? Mm -hmm. Not y'all, y'all. Yes, sir. You all are. Well, look what he starts off saying. He said, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And he's saying that in a point of fleshliness, that when we have these unforgiving feelings, no matter how hurt we might be, because we have these feelings, we are not in a spirit of righteousness. 
would not agree with that. Um, your mindset is on the pain, the problem, the person, right? Revenge. Revenge, but not necessarily on the healing availability of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. In an other under unforgiving spirit, can we say that we really understand the situation? <clears throat> In an unforgiving spirit. Um, I don't think you want to understand. Mm. I mean, you're in an unforgiving spirit. Nothing people say to you mean anything. Okay, so preservation kicking, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about really how I feel, mm -hmm. right? More than even the person I have the problem with. Mm -hmm. When we have been wrong, we tend to lean more towards what we're going through versus maybe the person who did it to us. Mm -hmm. I give an example. I, I teach uh, at a uh, program called Draw Partnerships. Of Central Florida, and I talk about how a you could be working customer service at a store or a business, and the customer comes in and they're irate or they're not um, being humble or being thankful for the service that they're giving it. They're ranting and raving, and so you decide the best way to fight fire is with fire. Talk back if you can. <laughs> And you rant and you rave, and then somewhere along the way, a manager is brought in, and the manager who may have a different mindset comes in and speaks, and we find out that the lady's all irate. Not that it's right, but it's real because she just lost her mom. Mm -hmm. Come on, Reverend. But you took a personal attack personally. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So we have to ask ourselves, do we really understand the situation that we're in or what we're going through? Because if we don't, we will not seek after what? God. That's what the scripture said. If your spirit is unforgiven, you're not seeking God. There's no way. Now, would you, <clears throat> could you possibly do a general church prayer? <laughs> Right. We learn how to manipulate things, right? I mean, you know, we learn how to say the right things and, you know, to give the appearance of, the Bible says, a form of godliness. Yeah. Yeah. But see, a form of godliness means anything you do that appears to be godly without a heart to or a mind to do it. He said, they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. In an unforgiving spirit, they come together, but not the prophet. I remember telling you all, I was speaking with a leader of mine, a friend of mine. He was talking about how he <clears throat> was the leader of his particular ministry and how no matter what happened in the meetings, this member would always lash at him and lash at him. He just couldn't seem to get it understood. And one time they said to him, you do your job and I'll do mine. Ouch. And he said, well, what is your job? She said, the pressure the preacher. That's real. That's real. That was her job, was to come there and keep the preacher under pressure. <laughs> but anyway, that's what she told him that was her job. Yeah. How profitable is that going to be with the member? How profitable is that going to be with the ministry? 
I would go to say, and I speak out of the most humble spirit that I can, I love that we have a ministry that I don't have to be here 24 7 eyeing everybody down for the ministry to operate. Come on, Reverend. Any true leader builds a setting and an environment where those who are in position can make things where they need to be. Look what he said. So he said, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. And we're talking about unforgiveness, right? So let's look here. Their mouths are full. Good God, I'm not. So what does it feel like when you don't want to forgive? Anybody? Be honest tonight. Let's be transparent. You're too calm, too quiet. Angry. Angry, right? Angry. When you have unforgiveness, you're angry. What else? Frustrated. Frustrated. Okay. Upset. Hurt. Feel bad. Upset. Disappointed. Okay. Disappointed. Why? Stop right there. Help me out, preacher. Because you had expectations of some people, whether realistic or unrealistic. And Disappointed. They expectations. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And are they... Mm, he missed it. Though. Are they... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are they credible expectations? That's good. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Can't be one or the other depending on the situation, right? Mm -hmm. Could you, what, what do I always say? But I do think it's too high that you need it. Whether it could be or could not be an expectation, it might be too high to that person. You're expecting more from them than what they were showing you. Wanted more. So we're back to, actually, um, verse 11, understanding. Maybe it's hard to understand that people can't give you what they don't have. That's right. Right? You feel like if they were evil enough to hurt me, they should be understanding enough to know that they hurt me <laughs> and be conscious enough to make me feel that it was unintentional, <laughs> right? It should give me everything I need to hopefully move, people use the word move on. I like to, move, I like to use the word move forward. Because mm -hmm. sometimes moving on means I went in a full circle and I can't write that where I started. So I move forward in a direction that I believe new ground, new territory, new things go my way, right? So you have to ask yourself, what do you do when your expectations are not meeting up with the person returning what you asked mm -hmm. to be returned? When we were talking about you have to um, release the person, right? Mm -hmm. Release the offense. Release the person from the offense. And here's why. Because if you don't, who's holding on to it? You are. So why do we hold on to it? Because we want to be justified in our anger. Come on, man. Okay. Anyone else? I'm just going to say it's a safe place. Safe place. <laughs> Explain. The safe place of, like, being let down again if you go and confront that person. Like, so instead of me talking to, with you, I'm like, hmm. So I continue to be bitter against you each and every time I see you. Uh -huh. Okay. On the board, Jamie. On the board. Just push up a little bit on the bottom. On the board. Not the other outside. No. Oh. All the way to all the way to your right. Okay. There you go. Bless your heart. There you go. You don't live a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so sometimes, you know, I, I, and I'm learning as I get older that and blessed be the Lord today. I, I just went to visit someone at that sock in this hospital room there. And, and, I'm hearing nurses go up and down the hallway. I'm hearing things. I'm hearing, guys, time. Mm -hmm. You can't get it back. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. 
If you carry this unforgiveness for years and years and years and years and years and years, there's going to come a morning where you're going to wake up. You're not going to be able to go where you want to go. You're not going to be able to do what you want to do. And all you're going to have is memories. Do you want to be laying there bedridden with unforgiving memories? Wow. That's torture. That's, that feels, that sounds like torture. You can't get up and walk to the park. You can't get up and go ahead, Mother. What if um, you did somebody wrong? Okay. And you asked the Lord to forgive you for what you did. Okay. But you didn't get a chance to ask that person to forgive you. Ooh. They died. Ooh. That's good. Okay. That's a good question. Let's get a question. Let's help. Let's let this work the room. One more time. Okay, what if you don't have a chance to ask that person to forgive you for what you did okay. against them? So I'm going to simplify You made it right with God. Yeah, you made it right with God. But you didn't get a chance to, in your own way, make it yeah. right with the person. Right. And the question is? Then the person died. So your question is? My question is, um, how does that sit with God? Yeah. Are you unforgiving you to yourself for that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I know, we didn't make it right, then we don't forgive ourselves in the, in the, for that. Right. AA exactly. realm where they, where, they, okay. where they do this when you make your amends. Right. And if the person's not there anymore, what you do, what they think you do is you live out what you would have done to make amends with them for others in your life. Okay, you catch that, mother? Mm -hmm. So he's saying, even though I didn't make it right with Aaron, I can make it right with people that I do know, or Aaron's family, or whatever. However, I want to connect that way of feeling like I gave back that closure. That closure. Yeah. Or, at the end of the day, and I always tell people that sometimes we overthink some things and underthink others. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. When you make that forgiveness pact, right, with God, you ask God in that, Lord, give me the opportunity mm -hmm. to make it right with whoever. Now, if God sees fit to take them before you do, that doesn't mean that you now can still carry the blame. Right. Okay. okay? And sometimes we feel like, well, I didn't get a chance to say, well, I would tell you, two kind of people at funerals, them that remember and those that regret Right, you can tell the ones climbing in the cast and getting on top of a push down. Take me, Lord. I ain't having floor. We got to go to my chair. Right? That's regret. Okay? That's what that's 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 time that I should have made it right. Knew I should have made it right. That's good. I can comment um, that on that and the thought process of um, being in that exact situation. Right. Um because I angry with my father and then the next day he was murdered mm -hmm. and I didn't have a chance to make him right and I had that guilt for a whole year eating at me where I had nightmares every night uh, of him trying to kill me mm -hmm. and that didn't make sense in my mind but I knew it was the guilt that I was harboring of not having being upset and not having a chance to get it right so it was at first I couldn't forgive myself and that's what was eating at me. Mm -hmm. The self, the, the, the unforgiveness that I had that the enemy allowed to also come in and condemn me. And then finally being able to pray and ask God to take the unforgiveness off of me and to pray to him to do a lot of things with that because I was upset with the, my father still mm -hmm. as to why, you know, the reason why I was upset in the first place. So I had to forgive a dead person Right, so that's already hard to do because they can't speak. Then I have to forgive myself for having that, even if other people was like, "Well, it was okay for you to feel that way because they should have." Yeah, but still, because now I don't have the chance, and in my mind, I don't know if he realizes that I actually did love him. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Then from that moment, as I grew up and got older, when I had friends who would try to make their child not like the father of the, you know, the baby daddy. Mm -hmm. or they treated their father so way, I would hold up, wait a minute now, because you don't know 
what time they got on this earth. You don't know X, Y, and Z. Right, right. Let them talk about it, resolve it, but do not go to sleep. Do not leave this person. Do not come from around this person without saying, I love you, fixing it, making it right. Because you don't want that kind of guilt and that kind of torment walking with you for the rest of your life. So that was my way of doing the full 360 right. on the forgiveness of. Because it's sometimes it's hard to forgive yourself when you have to forgive somebody when you are when they you know what I'm saying when you've been through something with them and you you want to have that conversation now you can't have it you have to forgive and there's no conversation and you still have to forgive it in your in your mind no closure exactly so now you got a general and then you just got a specific she poured into someone else who mm -hmm. may not have seen the value of making it right you know or didn't make it right or whatever but she brought it back home personally. And sometimes what we have to understand when we go through things personally, we're we're going through it to help somebody else. Right. Mm -hmm. Quit quit taking that God got a problem with you. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> quit making it like you know intensely trying to you know beat you over your head. Mm -hmm. But if we don't have examples, how can we really excel when we're exposed to people? Right. Mm -hmm. Because the first thing they say is, you don't know what I'm going through. Exactly. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. That's just what people say, right? You've you never been where I've been. And maybe not in the same line like, but you have a similar track that you went on, right? You have that forgiving, unforgiving spirit. So my first point talks about unforgiveness, mm -hmm. it breaks ties within us. And what I mean by that is you may have relationships that you now, because you are unforgiving, have lost the tie God gave you. Mm. Wow. Here's an example. The Bible talks about son, youngest son comes to the dad and says, look, I want my money. Mm. Talk about it. Give me my grip. Let me have it. <laughs> I want the caddy. I want the bank account. I want the 401k. Mm -hmm. I want it all. Dad says, okay. Well, since you no longer see my love my discipline is love. Have at it. Son goes, hangs out all night, all white party, does his thing, winds up, loses everything, right? Wow. Now has to realize he's got nothing and nobody. But then what happened? He came to himself. <laughs> Understanding kicks in. What am I saying? Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we have to go through things to yeah. we ain't got nobody else we can talk to but yeah. God. Yeah. But God. We can't go to Uncle Junior no more. We can't, you know, we got to go to God. Yeah. And that's why I, I encourage us to make Bible studies in Sunday school because that's where you help grasp the understanding yeah. of not just reading scripture but right. articulating it to personally be able to put it to your life that you can be able to say okay this is what it means to Jocelyn right because what it means to Jocelyn may be different from Jerry yes. Jerry has more life experience Jerry has more things he's been through Jocelyn's still learning but Jocelyn's still got her own stuff too yeah. right yeah. so we have to say what kind of ties Unforgiveness breaks. It breaks anything that's going to help you be stronger and wiser. Mm -hmm. And so you have to protect your forgiveness yes. by not letting unforgiveness take over. It's easy to say, you know what, I, I'm done. Now, the Bible do say come out from amongst them, right? <laughs> yes. That's what guarding your heart means, right? That means, you know what, Aaron? She was cold and all, but... When that phone ring at that certain time, no, no, no. I already, I already been there, it's a setup. right? It's a setup. When he called, he's speaking all nice and, you know, Tubbs like, Miami Vice like, you know, Chocolate City saying, hey, what you doing? Why you gonna come out? I'll pick you up. You got to be able to say, ah, in the name of Jesus, no. <laughs> I bind you, devil. <laughs> you bring me no peace or comfort. <laughs> Only discontent. 
right? We're talking about the same place. You know how many people go back to the drama because in their mind the drama is the safe place? Uh, how many conversations have y'all had since me and you talking to these girls tell you this? You be like, why would you? You say to your mind, why would you keep going through this drama? Because that's their drama, not yours. They might throw it on you, but it's theirs, and they love it. <laughs> right? Because it makes them feel like something, not even somebody. Right? Am I wrong? Something. Some kind of attention is given, even if it's the wrong kind of attention. Yeah. The message about it talks about the wheel, how it starts off taking you out and you know, buying your things, treating you nice, and all of a sudden he starts degrading you, and then next up to that he threatens you, and next thing you know, any man got to eat the cake. <laughs> and then he come right back around with gifts and presents and kisses and girl, you know I'm just, you know how you look. Now you know how you make me mad now. You don't make me mad. <laughs> right? And then so you get trained in the believing what's happening to you is really your am I by myself? It's really your fault. <laughs> you brainwash yourself into believing. Then when you come to the house of God and God is trying to give you a release, you be like, yeah, but you don't really know him, Mother Rachel, like I know him. <laughs> you know, right? I, he, he don't mean you know, to run me over with a car. I just got in the way. <laughs> if I would have moved, he, mm. he, wouldn't, he wouldn't have been his fault. I've been through that, Reverend, and the, the thing, the part of it is my mindset at that particular time was no one else would be able to love me because the gifts, the this, the that. The and it took me getting to, God had to break me completely down, put me into an inner circle where my life was transformed mm -hmm. for that mindset to be changed all over that I am needed and necessary. I am valued. So when you talk about that, and I see it in other women, so it's a lot when... So you really have, you can tell... I can tell it, because I've been there, done that. Mm. They say, you know, women that are in abusive relationships when they get a good man, they can't even be in a relationship because they're so used to the abuse that they that have. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. That is 100%. And you know, as men, we do get abused too. Yes, definitely. That is true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Break it down, Pastor. Y'all just. That's true. Break it down. Y'all think I'll be crying. No. For no reason. But in reality, my soul is screaming. Oh. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? You immediately defend immediately. the offender. He <laughs> <It> says, <laughs> you can become too comfortable in the unnatural habitat of self-righteousness and self-pity. Your past hurts, though buried, are still very much alive. What are you talking about? Where the bones buried at? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these dry bones. Yeah. <laughs> and because they are not released in God's way, oddly enough, you become like your offender, which you're blind to. What I always say, if you're not careful, you'll become the very thing you hate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they said 90% of kids who bully were bullied. Bullied. Not forgiving your offender is an offense to God, thereby making you an offender mm -hmm. to God as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's real. Now that hurt though. Yeah. All that I've been through. Now let me help you with that. That doesn't mean that you died on the only way to hell. That's not what it says. What it says is you have to find the righteousness of God mm -hmm. so that you can now be used in this circle. You talk about inner circle. How important was the Jerry, the inner circle? You said you were coming out of what you got. How important was this inner circle? Because when he tried to come back around, I was able to stand up to him, to the words, to know 
not again. No, I'm in a good place. No, do you not leave? I would call the police. No, it, it was a lot. And that's why I prayed and asked God to keep me busy in Him so to keep my mind from thinking of what happened to me. And I thank God that I'm here. Yeah. Amen. Jesus. I hope we help somebody tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at Proverbs 28 and 13. Let's find that for a minute. Proverbs 28. So the first one is uh, forgiveness. It breaks ties within us. And we need those certain ties. We're not talking about soul ties. <laughs> you know not know what a soul tie is? See how you know what a soul tie is? Yeah. Okay. You're on a good leadership. <laughs> Jocelyn, you know what a soul tie is? Okay. Your mother will give it to you after church. <laughs> Y'all got another word for it. <laughs> Sneaky link. Sneaky link. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Sneaky link. <laughs> Proverbs 28 13. Someone find that. What is, hold on. Let's look at though. On that one, let's look at uh, 28. Let's start at verse 10. Okay. Read that again, Pastor. Whosoever causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way, mm. he shall fall himself into his own pit. But the upright shall have good things in possession. The rich man is wise in his own conceit, but the poor that have understanding searcheth him out. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, a man is hid. He that covered his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Mm. So look at this for a second. Look at verse 10. Whosoever causes unforgiveness mm. shall fall in his own pit. But the forgiving mm -hmm. shall have good things in possession. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, right? Yes, sir. Because when you forgive, you can give. Right. So if I can give, I can get. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Most people who have an unforgiving spirit, no matter how much they get, Doc, they still want what? More. More. <laughs> they still want more, T. You can't say enough. You can't do enough. Mm. Can't cook enough. Can't come pick them up enough. Can't ride them enough. Can't buy enough gifts. Right. Can't go up down the road with them enough. You can't tell them how much you love them, how much you care for them. Can't rub the back. Can't rub the head. Can't, can't do nothing enough. Right? Because it's an unfulfilling void because the forgiveness will not be accepted. Ask yourself, who's got me like that? <laughs> Verse 13, let's look at that. He said, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. That's what he said, he that is unforgiving Mm -hmm. shall not prosper. Uh -huh. But whoso confess, whoso forgive, shall have mercy. Mm -hmm. Because really when you spot and decide to forgive, you be like, no, must be a child. I'm not going to let him take me down that road anymore. No. <laughs> I'm not only going to live, but I'm going to live a long time. Oh, I'm sorry. Billy really needs being called. <laughs> You said, Judy. You let my hand fall on. <laughs> you don't like gardenias? <laughs> Y'all Google it. Anyway, he says, He that covered his sins. How would you cover your sins? <laughs> that was perfect timing. Serious pastor lying. <laughs> I get it. I know. You keep it on my toes. How would you cover your sin? 
among us. What is poverty? Right? Lack of what? Resources. Very good. Right? Way back in the day in college, they had a poverty class. Anybody ever took that in college? No, they might have it. Way back then, I, I found the easy class. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> but it actually was an interesting class. And it talked about the demographics of poverty and how if Palmer was getting ready to graduate high school, mm -hmm. none of his brothers graduated high school. They all quit. Mm -hmm. So if Palmer graduated high school, they made Palmer feel bad because Palmer thought he was better than the rest of us. Because mm -hmm. he are y'all catching this? Yeah. So hey, Palmer's yeah. senior year. He didn't graduate. Because they made it sound like you were disowning yourself from the family by trying to move. Are y'all catching this? This was real. Especially in the, in the northern states. Yes. <laughs> Give you another one. In the southern states, if Uncle Junior had a farm, all the kids went to school to a certain amount of time, a wrong this month, my check. And then they all had to do what? Work Go work the field. You got to about fifth or sixth grade, maybe. You were hitting no field. You weren't doing no 12th grade, somebody I'm walking from Capitol. Well, we ain't got time for that. We gotta hit these fields, we gotta make this money, we gotta get this stuff, we gotta do it. it was it was like that, was it not, mother? Yes, it was. That was what poverty made. So here we are now, young people, who have an ability to go from K through 12 to a doctorate degree, who skip class, mm -hmm. who sleep in school. Mm -hmm. You grew up in an era where joining the game was part of the deal. Right? It was like part of the work, work, pre workers with living in the neighborhood. If you lived in the neighborhood, you had to be part of the gang. There wasn't no. Wow. But in the same sentence, watch this. If you have potential, you better have somebody. That's real. Tell them about, I guess you would, if they want to go do something one night. You, yep, I mean. The people that I hung out with was not very good people. And um, there was a night that we were going to do some not very good things. But because of my basketball <coughs> abilities, they told me, nope, not tonight. You sit this one out, but we still got you. <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, I didn't, I didn't understand it. I mean, only thing they knew that you have potential. I didn't see the potential, Ooh. although I was a part of the game. Ooh. So there were certain things I was allowed to go around and do. There were certain things they said, no, you said this one out. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, especially the closer I got to going off to college, the less I was allowed to partake in. Wow. Yeah. So think about that. That sometimes we are around people who you think trying to give you a hard time, they see more than you see. They just trying to protect you. That's good. And you say they got a problem with you. He says, he who conceals his sins does not prosper, but whoever confesses. Why is that important to confess? takes ownership of it. Okay. So they use the word, look at, look at the Bible says. He said confesses and renounces. Mm -hmm. Or forsaken, right? Why why is he doing why is he doing both? Why is he making that a two step process? He said and. So that means you have to do what? Say here. You have to identify. 
Confession is a part of identification, is it not? You have to say there is a problem. Help somebody run. <laughs> <laughs> My wife. She don't do well in the classroom. <laughs> She's an online student. <laughs> Look what he said. But whoso confesseth and forsaken. Them shall have mercy. Whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sis. I looked up renounce, but I was interested. Right? You know confess is to say, you know, right. I have it. But when you and renounce, renounce says to reject and stop using, refuse or resign a right or position. Mm -hmm. And I thought about a couple Bible studies ago when you said we have to lose the right to be offended, lose the right to hold the for, um, unforgiveness because we feel like we will, we have the right to hold on to that. But when you renounce it, you're resigning from that right. You're saying, no, that's not in my position anymore. I don't have the right to hold this anymore. Not only will I say it, but I'm also releasing it and literally I'm, I'm letting it go. It's not, a, it's not mine. So not only do I have to say it, I have to do it. That's right. Does that make sense? Yes. When we talk about we have to have the heart, right, to do something, but you have to have the mind to keep doing it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because if I do it just on my heart alone, it's situation. Yes. I'll do it today, but tomorrow I may not be may down. Not <laughs> So I have to retrain myself again. <laughs> and then you purpose it. Kill your flesh. <laughs> Daily, right? Daily. Right. Hey, Deep, we love you, man. <laughs> right? I knew you could hold. I knew you were going to break loose. Sorry, Pastor, please forgive me. I openly forsake what you just said. So, we have to open up and hear it. But we have to have a mind and a, a, to keep saying, you know what? Yes. I'm not angry about it anymore because I know what people try to take me. Right. I, I, you know one of the strangest feelings to have is like, you ever go to work and you sitting there and before you know it, it's 11 o'clock and you ain't did nothing? You've been at 7, 30 o'clock. You're like, oh, oh, oh. Huh? You're like, where did the day go? <laughs> your whole mind has just been cluttered with stuff that has nothing to do with your work, what you needed to do. And before you know it, the day is over. So, but you go home like you done worked 14 hours. You're so tired and drained. Because you put all this extra pressure on your mind, your heart, your spirit. Let's go no further. On the next page, flip it over. I brought up some things. What the un unforgiving heart is. And what the unforgiving heart has. It's judgmental. <laughs> Focusing on the past wrongs that the offender committed. Condemnation. Being intolerant of any present failures of the offender. <laughs> Do not judge. Do not condemn. <laughs> Forgive and you will be forgiven. Why does why does he do it? Why do he say do not judge? But he's a big Yeah. Why does he say do not judge? We don't judge the practices of people, guys. People make mistakes. Yeah. My mother told me to get that back. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> God says that we're, we're, saying we're not judged because people make mistakes, right? Right, 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 right? But it's the principles of people. Yeah. 
We got to look past what they said and done. Look to who they are. If that's who they are, see, and I try to teach all my preachers and say, listen, don't take no person what these people say to you. Because they can say the same thing to T.D. Jakes or anybody else. You just have to be in the room when they say it. Folk is folk. Yes, they are. Amen? Yes, they are. There was a, a, a saying, um, I had an old te auntie used to say in there, we had a lady used to be at our church, used to say it, whatever on the record going to play. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yeah, that's deep. So who people are? So who they are. <laughs> so don't make it like they have a personal problem with you, per se. Now. We do talk about people can be impressed or intimidated. That's possible, right? There are some people who can see God all over you before you even know God all over you. And you think you catching it because they got a personal, physical, fleshy problem with you, but that ain't what it is. They see the purity of God upon you and it makes them upset. It irritates yes. them. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like, and I have to bring it up. Yeah. Um, talk about Joseph, like in Genesis 37, and how his father gave him a coat of many colors, uh, but the coat represented two things. The coat represented the favor that he had from his father, right. but it also represented how he was despised by his brothers, mm -hmm. and that's why people hate you, because the favor that's on your life shows up the non-favor that's, that's on their life, and so now it's like, who does she think he is? Who does he think he is? Every time they see the glory of God, they have to be reminded of the lack that's on their life. And you got to look at it, though. If you have the favor of God upon you, there's a very good chance that trouble coming your way. Yeah. 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 Right? Yes. He was coming to tell me something. <laughs> Contempt, looking down without mercy on the offender. We got to be careful. Unforgiveness will cause us to have contempt with people. Say it one more time. Contempt. To not have an unforgiving, we have an unforgiving spirit. We got a problem with them. And those of us who serve God, we have to really be careful because we can justify the scripture. Uh -oh. yeah. Right? Yeah. We can manipulate that thing so sweet, mm -hmm. right? We can call it, call it out, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you treat them, you look down upon them. It says looking down without mercy. That is contempt. Yeah. We cannot be believers of Christ and not have a merciful spirit. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. As Sometimes let people know. The Bible says you will love one and hate the other. So I explain to them, I love you. But I hate what you did. <laughs> yeah. Right? Resentful. Begrudging the successes of the offender. Because they hurt me, I'm mad because they get exalted somewhere else. Wow. Dare I say this? Someone hurt you a while back. Look at Sam. Did you know Pastor Murray preaching? Who, him? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> watch your wife, watch your kids. <laughs> watch your wife. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> resentful. Could be credible, but <laughs> resentful. <laughs> Envy, coveting the accomplishments of the offender. Mm -hmm. Why would God bless him? Vengeful, rejoicing when the offender experienced, I told you it was going to happen. Deep. I knew God was going to get him. <laughs> I told you. Look at it now. Retaliation, desire to get even. The Bible says, do not gloat. <coughs> right? Uh -huh. When your enemy falls, 
When he stumbles, do not let your heart rejoice. Why is the Bible telling us that? Why does he not want us to rejoice? Well, what is rejoicing for? It's to exalt one another. Joy is for the person, right? Joy is for me. Rejoice is what I do with others. Right? So why would I take my joy, put it with your joy, because Paul fell out and broke his leg? What a joy in that. But do you think people do that? So that means I can preside today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh. I passed on the road. I saw. I could have gave her a ride. Wow. She got triple A. <laughs> you don't think people think like that? Yes. He gonna use me today. She she gonna be late. I know she gonna be late. You didn't even slip up. I don't know about She's gonna be late. How you know? I don't know. I just feel like it was spirit. She ain't gonna pay the bills. Now she gonna put it. I just say, baby, baby, that wasn't her. Prideful, elevating himself above the offender who is considered less deserving, and that can be look. It ain't right, but it's real, right? You can feel like because you were hurt so bad by somebody, mm. they shouldn't get a crippled crab or crutch. Mm. Mm. Right? You can feel that way. Yeah. You know, they should be homeless sleeping on the street with, with you know, no pot, no wonder. Mm. <laughs> but look what he says. Pride goes before what? The and a high spirit before what? Oh. If we are prideful, if we are unforgiving, we will surely what? Oh. What do you say? When you dig one hole, you better be. <clears throat> We're back to the power of an inner circle, guys. Because an inner circle kind of brings you back to, I know how you feel, but you can't feel that. That's right. You can't feel that way. Right. I know what you want to say. I know what you want to do. But you can't feel that way. Mm -hmm. And you got to make peace with that. Mm -hmm. So you can be a blessing to somebody else. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Check your inner circles, guys. Mm -hmm. Complaining. Quit the quarrel over personal choices, words, and deeds. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, this, right here, Philippians 2 and 14, it says, do something. Everything. Most things. Everything. Without complaining or arguing. All right. That's. Mm -hmm. Some of you, Sister Teresa, swear, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Not impossible, but that's hard. Uh, what do you do with someone who, every time you try to talk or relate or get something, they always got to complain? How do you handle that, First Lady? Complaining all the time that you need to wash your clothes, but you don't have the washer because your husband didn't go get it. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, you can't do that. 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 You can't <laughs> it's set up to bring you out of your spirit, but you know what God is. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> Resistance. Uh -huh. Arguing about an advice or constructive criticism mm -hmm. regarding the offender. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus, that would be sex. Impatient. Uh -oh. Exhibiting little patience while being easily provoked. Yeah. Annoyance. <laughs> Feeling easily irritated. By the A man's wisdom, though. This is where I lie. <laughs> A man's wisdom gives him patience. It is, it is to his glory to overlook the offensive. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't do it, Aaron. No matter how much they try to poke the bath. Don't do it. Bitter. Feeling weighed down with unresolved. Negative. Negative. Negativity. Feeling no joy and no approval concerning him. Each heart knows its own bitterness and no one else can share its joy. It said, because of unforgiveness, the offended person becomes spiritually dry. Yes. Trying to feel connected with God, but lacking spiritual growth. As a direct result of unforgiveness, the offender's prayer life is blocked. Mm -hmm. Now, whoa, 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 what are you saying? God, I, I got God here, I'll pray. No. No. Hearing and listening is two different things. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hearing is this is to catch it, you've heard something, mm -hmm. listening is to process it mm -hmm. for a certain purpose. Mm -hmm. Look what he says here though. Matthew 6 and 15, what does it say? If you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive yours. So they say he didn't hear it. <laughs> but he didn't move on it. And you don't want God not to move on mm -hmm. your sin. So now my last point, we talked about unforgiveness breaks ties within us. Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness builds poverty among us. Mm -hmm. Now unforgiveness binds our burdens mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. See, in life, guys, we are one of two things to people. We're either burdens or blessings. You can be a burden without God. You can only be a blessing with God. Ask yourself, when you walk into the room, do people see a blessing or a burden? What was our question last week? Talk about Christian. What can I do when I don't feel like forgiven? Okay. The question was, what can I do when I feel like forgiving? What you have, D? To give anybody. Ooh. Uh, this is best done uh, by the ability to express that you don't have the ability to do such stuff. Like mm. So you ask for the intervention of the Holy Spirit to lead you to God. No matter how close they is to you? Yes. <laughs> the closer the better. I hear you tonight. Did you help somebody? <laughs> Tonight's question is How can I forgive someone who has not apologized or shown any kind of repentance? Y'all take that on with you. <laughs> Anyone before we add? Anyone else? Right. What taught me about that question was when she was um, an infant and I was grieving over so much and I was holding her one night and I was grieving over that hurt and pain, mm -hmm. he, God began to take her breath away from me. Wow. So I had to learn how to 
and let go. But I was breathing so hard, crying with her in my in my arms, then her she started just She's been crying ever since. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? So I'll that question. Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. If you grab with Sebastian Marina. So Saturday, Saturday is our backpack, school drive, giveaway, food, fun, <laughs> fellowship. We have no, Tonya Ministries of Central Florida, Bishop Frank Murphy. We're going to help celebrate with him. Woo-hoo. Those who can and will, please come by. Um, Sister Jocelyn will be bringing a sermon in of encouragement for all, all the right. students. Yeah. 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 Right. God is going to use her to bring. Um, if you can, be there by 9.30ish. If you come in to help, be there by 9. <laughs> uh, as we prepare to have a good time. We're going to try to beat the rain. It's going to be enough. Is it rain Saturday night? Yeah, it's going to be 7 That's percent. Percent. Oh, I don't have any. Oh, it is? Florida, it depends on what side of town you're in. Okay. Oh, right here. Um, I'm asking for special prayers uh, for Mother Porter. Yeah. Okay. I visited okay. her today for a couple of hours. So please keep her. Okay. I'm so sorry. Help mm-hmm. uh, when you can. I'm so excited. We're having a full load of children for Wednesday night. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Sister Gwen has recruited her whole apartment complex. <laughs> Keep doing it, sis. We'll get them here. We'll figure it out. Um, next week starts Vacation Bible School. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can take it. Yeah, that's, that's actually what the group we're trying to adhere to, but at least we'll take what God said. They break them off in the group, so 16 year old they got they got room for that. Right, Doc? 16 year old Yeah, they'll make it work. And the way she teaches it is, is at the lowest of That That is not too boring. Right. Will they be? That's the Bible Bible study. 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 Bible study.